Make a little room. We got to get Jim up here. Jim, come on up. <laughs> run, 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 run. <laughs> there's, uh, there's more room up here. Come on up. If you're on the side wall over here, move on up. If you're in the middle, move on in. There's a crowd forming outside, so if you all can scoot forward, please scoot forward. I, I plan on completely breaking the fire code here. Everyone just pile in. Man, it's a really tiny room. Yeah. Very small. I mean, the, hottest, the hottest feature in OpenStack, and they give us the smallest room. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> so containers on bare metal. If you want a public IP on every container. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shall we uh, get started? OK, uh, let's get going. So uh, we're going to present to you uh, tenant network isolation for bare metal deployments uh, utilizing Neutron. So the idea of this whole project is to provide the same uh, type of a framework which is available for virtualized environments uh, for bare metal environments uh, in terms of uh, multi-tenancy. So, so I am Sukhdev Kapoor. I'm from Arista Networks. I'm Jim Rollenhagen from Rackspace. Uh, I'm Devin Anda Vanderveen, uh, just switched over to IBM. So I want to call out uh, some of the active contributors who have been really uh, working on this program, even though we are here just representing the team. But, uh, but there are a lot of people who have put in a lot of effort to make it work. So Tariq Elahi and his team uh, from SAP they were the actual first people who approached me uh, first time that, hey, look, uh, we need this feature, uh, so please uh, work with us. We want to utilize your switches, and this piece is missing. And he put me in touch with Devananda. Special thanks to Devananda for jumping on it when we first approached him that, hey, look, uh, this piece is missing in Ironic, and I think uh, we can help build it. And uh, so since then, the team has been uh, really added. Om Kumar from uh, HP, uh, he, he's sitting down here. He's been very, very active. He, he, he has uh, significantly participated in this. Uh, every evening, he and I would be on the IRC private channel. So I will run all day long and uh, report to him what my issues are, what, what we are finding, what the problems are. He'll be looking for answers, and and the other way around. <laughs> yeah. So, so then he will report back. So he will work all day long, and uh, at the night time he will report back to me. Hey, look, I'm finding these issues, and so forth. So it was like uh, pretty hectic, but we got it all working. Jim, of course, has been uh, partner in crime. So shoulder to shoulder, he's been pretty actively involved. Uh, myself, uh, Mitchell, uh, we've been like, he's, my, he's been my partner in crime in getting this thing done from Arista team. And uh, Ironic Core team has been very helpful in reviewing and providing support, uh, last minute issues, you know, so significant help there. And Neutron Cores, Bob Kukura, you know, uh, Kevin Armando, uh, Kyle, everybody has been uh, very, very supportive, very helpful in, in presenting different ideas that how can we bring the information from Ironic uh, into Neutron. Okay. So having said that, I'm going to, uh, so the, our agenda is actually fairly short, but you know, depending upon the questions uh, we get, uh, we can get into as much deep dive we need to. So, so Gentlemen here, uh, you know, who, who has the biggest and the deepest knowledge in the background about Ironic, he's going to cover the history and background of where we were, and uh, uh, Jim will get into the problem statement. 
and uh, proposed solution and then I'll step in and discuss the architectural details. And I have prepared a little demo. We will, I will actually show you this whole, uh, whole solution working uh, from end to end and uh, then we'll take uh, question and answers. So having said that. So um, way back when, um, some folks started using Nova to drive bare metal machines. Uh, and then I pulled that out into Ironic. The, the original goal was HPC, right? Using Nova Compute, or just using OpenStack for HPC workloads, scientific workloads tend to work better with more processing power. That's all single tenant, private cloud kind of stuff. Um, that expanded uh, with Triple O to still be single tenant workloads, um, using Ironic to deploy OpenStack or deploy other complex applications. Folks began experimenting or doing private Hadoop clusters on Ironic. Uh, but again, this is all still using Ironic and OpenStack in a single tenant environment. In that situation, a flat network is fine. It's single L2 domain for all the servers. Even scaling up to hundreds of machines is just fine in that space. We didn't need multi-tenancy. We didn't need network isolation. We didn't need to integrate with Neutron for this kind of stuff. We did integrate with Neutron for DHCP and IP assignment and that so on. But the idea to provide uh, a bare metal public cloud uh, has been there pretty much since the beginning of this project. Uh, when we saw what it could do, like, yep, that's, that's really awesome. People will want that. But how do we get there? And, and I've been steering the project. Um, actually, Jim is now steering it, but I've been steering it up to now um, to kind of deal with things incrementally. And it's mature enough that now we're tackling the really hard problems. And this one in particular has required deep work with Neutron. We're changing our API. You guys have done some changes. To, uh, and it's been two cycles now from the, when the idea came up and we began talking. We, we started in Liberty. Uh, working really in Liberty. Yeah. 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 We started working in Vancouver and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We, we began the conversation before Vancouver. Correct. That was our first real design together. So in just six months, we've gone from our first real head-to-head -head meeting about this, work out a design, to you guys have a working proof of concept now. Correct. And the code's up there and, and yes. we're, we're this close. Yes. So the, the real problem here was like single tenant environment, there's no traffic isolation between machines. Every machine is on the same L2. They can see each other's traffic. Uh, ARP spoofing is possible. There's no separation from the provisioning network to the tenant network. Even in a single tenant, it's like your instance would have direct access to the control plane of the cloud. In, you know, if I'm doing uh, scientific workloads or, or Hadoop, I don't really care, it's all mine, I trust myself, or I trust my users in that. But we really needed to solve that. Right, and so Rackspace a year and a half ago was working on building a bare metal public cloud. And obviously single tenant networking won't fly there. Um, so we, we were working on Ironic um, we started building this out downstream um, because, you know, we had months and that doesn't work upstream. Uh, and so we basically, we hacked up Ironic a little bit, uh, made a little ML2 plugin, and uh, basically that provided secure multi-tenant networking, um, totally cut tenants off from the data, or from the control plane. Um, it was only our use case. It was bonded interfaces. We trunked two VLANs down, one for each of our shared tenant networks. Um, and it was super, super hacky and relied on a lot of stuff that it shouldn't have, but it totally worked. Um, we did do it in the open. Uh, we started talking about it right away. We put up patches, um, even though we knew they wouldn't get accepted as is. We put them up to show people how we were doing it. Um, our ML2 thing was open source. It used Cisco equipment, but it was pluggable for other drivers. So we had plugins inside our ML2 because we hired Exhibit, apparently. Um, and eventually other people wanted to do this, Arista and HP primarily. And we started working on this with them, um, like they said, about six months ago, and wanted to do it right. And so we did. And so the proposed solution, I guess the solution we came to, uh, is basically what we had downstream. Um, 
So how that works is there's ML2 plugins for given switches that know how to configure a switch the right way, right? Um, they, we use the port bindings extension, the profile goes up there. Uh, that binding profile contains um, switch port information like the host name, the actual port it lives on, anything else you might need. Uh, and most people deploy ML2 so they can just pick it up and use it. Uh, and then we went back to Ironic and Nova and sorted out the actual isolation from the control plane. And so in the past, Nova, when it created the ports at boot time, would create ports on the control plane network and just pass those over to Ironic and Ironic would pixie boot on them and just, it would work. Uh, what we did here is Nova needed to create the tenant ports because it had the information it needed. Um, but then we had to make Nova not actually bind those ports through because we didn't want to connect it up before it was deployed. And so uh, we modified the binding profile to allow for that. Um, and then those ports get passed to Ironic for later use. Uh, when Ironic does the deploy, it creates its own ports on the provisioning network, um, does all the pixie and deployment on that, shuts the machine down, flips over to the tenant networks and uh, turns it back up and that's when the tenant now has access to it. Yeah, so uh, like what Jim mentioned, so there are really three uh, networks involved. Uh, the provisioning network is where uh, the server uh, really picks the boots, brings the image down and, and starts to boot. And once the, deploy, the entire deploy phase takes place on the provisioning network, and uh, uh, once the, uh, the deploy phase is over and the IPA is running on, on the server and communicates with the ironic conductor, at, at that point, a network flip takes place. The, the uh, server gets disconnected from the provisioning network and gets attached to the tenant network, right? A and that's what a uh, tenant uh, network, that's the ultimate, that's the, uh, the end goal uh, where the server needs to be connected. And the cleaning network uh, is pretty much uh, was in place already. This is what's used for a deletion of the instance uh, and before the, the instance is taken down. It's put on the uh, cleaning network and is remotely wiped out. And, and for context, that's where firmware updates, erasing hard drives, making sure um, the bare metal is recycled properly happens. So. Some deployers may wish to isolate that from their provisioning network, given there could be code running there. Yeah, so uh, so the Nova, when, when you uh, launch an instance, uh, the Nova is essentially dealing with the tenant network as it does for virtual virtualized networks, but nothing is bound. The house ID is not presented, and the ML2 uh, drivers, they were not uh, bind any port to the network, it's just created the port is sitting there unbound, and the, the ironic driver is what, which, which is managing the entire back end of it and causes the network flip. So once the instance is ready to connect to the uh, tenant network, at that point it will do a uh, port update to, uh, to Neutron to connect to the, the tenant network. So here are the basic components of the solution. So we have ironic and Nova. So Nova kick starts the process. Ironic, ironic driver takes over and uh, goes through this provisioning network and uh, uh, network flip. And the neutron on the other hand is uh, facilitating the create, uh, bind, unbind, delete of the ports from the respective networks. Okay. So on the, uh, okay. on the back end, uh, uh, Neutron, uh, we're utilizing uh, Neutron uh, ML2 core plugin. So the way ML2 core plugin works is that it, there are multiple uh, uh, vendor drivers which can all simultaneously work together. And uh, the context gets passed from the Neutron uh, ML2 core plugin to the mechanism drivers. And then the, by utilizing that context, mechanism drivers then can uh, provision the hardware. So so that's the part which is already in place as a part of ML2 core plugin. Uh, 
which is what we've been able to leverage significantly to come up with. So that was one of the reasons we were able to come up with this solution rather quickly. Uh, so as you can see, one point I want to make here is this, this uh, solution really depended upon touching on three different uh, projects, the Ironic, NOVA, as well as uh, Neutron. So coordination, you know, having multiple blueprints and all that this, was This is really fast to get a feature this big through three major projects in OpenStack. It's, it's been a work from a lot of people. Like sort of began this saying, it's, it's impressive. Yeah. yeah, so there are a lot of moving parts to make this thing work. And, and these gentlemen made it really possible, you know, dealing with all the logistics and so forth. So here, I'm, I'm going to quickly walk through uh, the flow, uh, how, how you know, the entire flow from end to end uh, plays around. So when you uh, launch an instance, so the NOVA uh, will uh, create a port on the tenant network. Because when, when you uh, in issue a NOVA boot command, you're specifying net ID of the tenant network, right? So so at this point, in this stage, you will, if, if you go look at the neutron port, so you will see a port run, uh, neutron port is created on a tenant network, but there will be nothing in there. So no information is there, and therefore ML2 drivers cannot uh, do anything with it. So it's just sitting there for later on, ironic to come and, and plummet. Uh, and then uh, at some point, the create port on a provisioning network takes place. Uh, and this is what uh, ironic driver kicks in. And when the create port on a provisioning network takes place, that's when the binding profile, which Jim had mentioned earlier, gets passed on. And there is a, some details on what gets passed on. I'll, I'll cover in the uh, following slide. So that information gets uh, passed to the uh, mechanism driver. And the mechanism driver then can identify which switch this particular server is connected to and, and therefore which interfaces or which ports need to be configured. And, and that gets configured and that's how the connectivity is achieved. So, so the server will get the DHCP uh, address, it will get the TFTP uh, server's address and whatnot, and it will start to pull uh, the the, I the image, and once the uh, image is downloaded, it starts to run. The, once the uh, IPA starts to run, it communicates with Ironic, and that's how the coordination and the network flip uh, uh, is facilitated. And at some point, when it has reached a certain stage, then Ironic will initiate the network flip. So a delete port on a provisioning network is issued at that point. Right? So that goes to Neutron, again goes back to the, uh, the mechanism driver, and it will unconfigure that particular port on a switch, and the, the server is disconnected at this point from the provisioning network. Right? Simultaneously, uh, it will issue uh, an update port on a tenant network. Remember, the port was already created by NOAA, so Ironic is coming in and it's uh, issuing an update on this. And in this update is all the profile information presented so that the uh, uh, mechanism driver will know what to do with it. And it goes and configures the appropriate interface with the appropriate uh, VLAN information. So that's how uh, the, the port gets bound on the tenant network and you have a complete uh, server up and running on a tenant network. So, so that's the basic flow which takes place. I didn't put the cleaning network, that's a part of uh, deleting the uh, instance. So now, uh, in order to make that uh, provisioning of the switches, ML2 uh, uh, mechanism drivers need to know which port or which switch where this uh, bare metal host is connected to, right? Unlike a virtualized environment in there, the, uh, the hypervisors are already known, the host ID, as long as it's presented, so the, the, the drivers know uh, where the hypervisor is and they can figure it out. But in this case, the server is down, there is nothing. So you have absolutely no information. So therefore, uh, the ML2 drivers need to know the physical connectivity as to which port on which switch 
and uh, uh, what the connective information. So for that, what we did was we are utilizing uh, the binding profile. This framework already exists in ML2, and we came up with this local link connection information. So what it, the connection really represents the physical connectivity, so switch ID. Switch ID is a, uh, an ID which uh, represents the switch. And we're, we're, we chose to use a Mac type of uh, uh, ID in this case. The reason for using that was uh, for the future extensibility, to, you know, so that it can be automated, like LLDP or, or, or any other protocols which, which can discover these nodes. So, so even though in the first phase, we, d we decided we will plumb it manually. So we will pr uh, the operator will add this information manually through the CLI, but eventually uh, to make it fully automated, so uh, we, will, uh, we can automate. So that was the reason to use the MAC ID in a MAC, uh, MAC address form, I mean switch ID in a MAC address form. And the switch info, this is uh, any anything uh, which helps vendors to uh, specify which switch is it, right? So because we're utilizing ML2 plugin, so it's a fairly flexible. So you can have a, a vendor may choose to have ML2 driver for only virtualized deployment and a separate ML2 driver for bare metal deployments. Or they may choose to have one ML2 driver which, which work for both, right? Or a vendor may go even further step and then they're utilizing multiple type of switches, right? And they may wanna have ML2 driver for each type, each model, uh, each switch model, they may wanna have a different uh, mechanism driver. So this gives that flexibility. So, you know, whatever, uh, whatever a vendor wants to choose, they can, they can specify that. And the port ID is the actual uh, port where the, the node is physically connected. And if you notice, this is a list, okay? This is not just one link. So, so when, when we present to the ML2 driver, we'll give it a list. The reason it is a list is that you know, your, uh, your node may have multiple necks. It may have multiple ports. So therefore, you may wanna use uh, uh, port groups or you may want to have, uh, you may want to bundle a bunch of ports and represent as a, uh, as a single interface. So all of those uh, are get packed and, and the ML2 driver on the back end will parse through it and will know exactly which interfaces are involved and therefore they can configure. Another thing which we have added is a new VNIC type, bare metal. So this helps the, the ML2 drivers to filter so if, if you have a ML2 driver which is doing deployments for virtualized as well as bare metal deployments, and you want to filter all the bare metal ports, so this gives you the ability to do that, right? And all of this uh, is managed by the ironic driver, you know, as a part of the, the flip part which I was mentioning earlier. So in order to facilitate and provide that information, so uh, we have created one new CLI in Ironic and we have updated one CLI. So so new, uh, uh, new CLI is a create port groups, right? So this is how you will specify, so here is an example down here. You will create a port group, you'll uh, specify the node ID, you'll specify the MAC address of the node. Uh, which you're using, and then you can utilize that port group and specify into the update port. To call out one thing here, you have to tell Ironic about the switch. Right? That's, that's the important part about this Co slide. Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah, so this is the part where the operator or, or, or deployer is involved. So, you know, like when cu currently when you do create port, you're specifying the MAC address manually. So now in addition, you're specifying this information, right? So the rest all is done on the back end. Okay, so uh, that gives us the ability to support uh, these configurations. So you can have a single port uh, server connected to a switch on a single port. You could have a port group utilizing lag connected to one switch or you could have a port group which is going to the multiple switches for uh, uh, utilizing MLAG 
right? So again, specified exactly the same way. So when you when you presenting, if for instance you wanted to represent this structure, uh, M lag peer utilizing lag, so you will just simply switch ID that list which I mentioned earlier link. In, so each each link represents that structure which I mentioned. So you're specifying the list. The backend ML2 driver knows, and that's why the switch ID and the switch information is there. So even if they are different models or whatnot. So the, the back end knows exactly which which port of which switch is, is the node connected to and hence it can appropriately configure that. The question was, do you have active passive support? Uh, this has nothing to do with active passive right. from, so from this point of view. That would but be at the host, right? Pardon me? That'd be configured on the host. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we I, I don't think we have covered that use case. Uh, is there a need for that? That would that, that would. Uh, There's a need for everything, right? <laughs> let's come. <laughs> let's yeah. come back to that after yeah. this session. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, so here, uh, so I, I'm gonna play a little demo. But before I get into that, I'm gonna describe to you the how the demo is set up. Right. So on the left hand side, uh, we, we essentially have a, a OpenStack controller, which is Ironic, Nova, uh, and Neutron, with Rista's ML2 driver running. Right. And Rista ML2 driver uh, talks over eAPI. That's a standard Rista uh, API. Uh, and it connects to uh, Cloud Vision. Okay. So the Cloud Vision essentially configures the switches or whatever. In this particular demo, I've used just one switch. And the controller is physically connected on, on Ethernet 1. Uh, so we, I'm, I'm essentially utilizing two ports. Port 1 for connecting the controller. And the port 2 is where the bare metal node is connected. Right? So, so that's my setup. And essentially, uh, one thing before I uh, run the, uh, the demo, what I'm going to say is, so as an admin, uh, admin will go create uh, a provisioning network. Now it's a neutron net create uh, command to create the provisioning network. And similarly, uh, the tenant network. So those are the two like sort of prerequisites. And then the, then the operator will go and uh, create the port, or, or do it because uh, those these pieces I don't show in the demo. So I just want to give a background so that you understand when, when you watch the demo. So, so the the operator will uh, issue an ironic port update to specify that physical connective input. So once that information is present, at that point uh, we we will issue the Nova boot and then the rest of the. Uh, information you will watch it going through. Having said that, so what I did was actually I was trying to be very brave. I have this demo running actually live. It, it's it's sitting in San Francisco, California, and I'm locked in. <laughs> so, so I was like beaten into my head that hey, Murphy's lock kicks in. And it, nothing works in the real life demos, so record it. So, so <laughs> plus the, it takes a long time for the server to boot. So I've kind of cut short, so made it very simple and short. So, so all the I'm, I'm starting a minute into the demo because I've already given you the introduction. So another thing which I've done is I've uploaded this on YouTube, so you can actually watch it at your leisure if you if you need to. Having said that, in the details, I have created two networks. One is a provisioning network, which is on 100 subnet. The provisioning network is utilized for the deploy phase of the bare metal server. During this phase, it uses this network, provision network, to fetch the image uh, from the TFTP server. And once the image is fetched, it will then uh, reboot 
and connect to the tenant network, which is on 200 interface. Okay, so SIEM networks have been uh, learned by the Avista Tor. Okay, the provision network is on VLAN 98, and the tenant network is on VLAN 35. So essentially, VLAN 35 and VLAN 98 are of importance to us. For the bare metal deployments, uh, we need the physical connectivity information. So here is the port, and if I go, In this case, you will notice there are a couple of uh, fields which have been added to the port structure of Ironic in the Liberty release. Okay. One is local link connection. What this essentially states is that bare metal server is physically connected to which switch. In this case, we are connected to a restart oh, at DSC 7050 switch and the port ID. Uh, remember, I mentioned so I'm gonna the switch ID that. is We're running a little bit late. I, two important networks are VLAN 35 and VLAN 98. Okay, since I've created those two networks, they both have DHCP instance uh, running on them. So what it means is the switch has connected. So, to the so we have a little dilemma here. In the interest of time, we're going to cut off the demo. Um, <laughs> watching VLANs change on a switch isn't that interesting anyway. So right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, so, 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 what I was going to uh, say is that this is on the uh, YouTube. Uh, you can watch it. Uh, here is the link uh, right here. So, you can play this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a couple quick things. This is not in the Liberty release, it will be in Metaka. Um, it was close, but not quite there. Uh, and there's a lot of future work to do yet. And with that, I'm sure there's a million questions out there. So feel free you to come up to the mic or just You want to cover the future? Let's, let's just, we've got a few minutes left. I would love to hear questions. Yeah. Um, and I'm just, just yell it from the back. I'll repeat it for the recording. <coughs> no. It's in Garrett, yes. At least for the So. Yes. So the neutron part is already merged. That's part of Liberty. Uh, there, there were two, two parts with it. First part of neutron uh, framework for this, and then the specific. So are there, is there any open source code for ML2 driver that works mm. with this framework? The question is, That's is a there question for your vendor. No, no. Yeah. The, 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 question, the question was, is there any open source ML2 implementation that supports this yet? And I. No. Uh, no, H HP HP uh, ML2 driver th is there. Or this time ML2 driver is there, which will work that. Okay. The second question is uh, how we're going to test it. Yeah, we've been noodling on that one. I don't have an answer yet. Yeah. Have you considered using? Questions: Have we considered using ODL in the middle instead of something something? Uh, and I haven't personally. Can yeah. ODL configure switches directly for this kind of thing? It, it could. You would need to add the API support to the, the ODL ML2 plugin. So okay. So okay. here is the deal. Here is the deal. ODL works as an, uh, another ML2 driver, right? And it's no different than what I described. So. So so the answer was. The answer from the audience over here was that this would work if someone added that support to the ODL ML2 driver. Correct. Sounds like something someone could do. Um, question in the middle. What's the net cost for the provisioning network What's the? The network cost between the provisioning network and Ironic. Uh, Ironic is on the provisioning network. So the, a, a machine that has been booted on the provisioning network must be able to currently make API calls out to the control plane, like download images from Glance or something. Is the provision network the same network as the control plane? It could be. Um, you need those two networks to be able to access each other. Yeah. Right. Ironic needs to be able to talk to the node and vice versa. Um, though in some configurations, depending on your hardware vendor, 
uh, there are ways to separate those so that Ironic does not need that access. Or Ironic can use the out-of-band channel instead of that network for some things. Depends on the hardware driver. You mentioned HPC at the beginning. Uh, is there any uh, thoughts on being able to provision InfiniBand ports? Uh, the question was, is there a, any intention or thought or support for provisioning InfiniBand? Um, I don't know the answer. I know that within hardware that Ironic supports, we already have uh, um, Mellanox drivers in some of the ways we build machine images. It's that we could do that too. Okay. I have two questions. First, if the uh, uh, deployment pattern is a three, and first is a boot from single NIC, and second is a, a same switch and link aggregation, and third is a MLAP. Mm -hmm. so cool. Have you tested that? No, uh, we have tested uh, at, uh, just one port for now. Single, <laughs> Single <laughs> port, <laughs> yes. Uh, Om, have you tested with port groups? Uh, no, so yeah. port group code is not yet ready, right? Um. Yeah. So we got it working last week, by the way. <laughs> so this is this is fresh off the oven. <laughs> the question was, uh, have you only tested single port or also lag and mlag? Ah. If we try, ah, 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 okay, it's, it's off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I will, I will add my voice. Uh, if we try to uh, deploy the link configuration, so when when the link configuration configuration will start creating the port uh, with the provisioning network, when uh, when I would like to know the so the, the question, as I understood it, was if you configure this with link aggregation, at what point in the node provisioning process does link aggregation take effect? So it's a essentially a logical port at this point. So when, when a, a port create happens on a provisioning network, so like I mentioned, it's a list of links. It's not a just single link. You know, you could have as many but links as you so want. Dev, when does so it take effect? Does it take effect during the Pixie boot and deploy process, or only during a, uh, for the instance? Uh, I think it's oh. only during the instance where we'll do that because yeah. Pixie and MLAG isn't yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, so not when Pixie boot. Yeah. Just So we just started this. Yeah. More stuff <laughs> may come later. <laughs> so that future work, um, <laughs> we want VLAN, VXLAN capabilities, um, capabilities for things like a subnet to each host for security, uh, things like that. Did you have something more in mind? Oh, that stuff. Um, yes, yeah, oh, so that's stack features. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so those get interesting. They're very vendor specific as I understand it because, yeah. so at Rackspace we've looked into doing things like that and we'd basically be putting ACLs on the switch. Um, and so we haven't investigated that upstream yet, uh, but I expect we will soon. Yeah, see, that's an excellent uh, question. See, uh, the security groups and security APIs, they all exist in Neutron, but they are all very virtualized word centric, right? So now that we have brought this feature in and we are utilizing all of the framework which exists in Neutron for virtualized uh, frameworks, so this will hopefully make it seamless to be able to utilize for this. We have, as a group, uh, for this initial uh, implementation, we have not looked into this. But this does open up uh, the path for us. And if there is an explorer, Bob has a point. I want to know if, uh, for the VLAN aware of VMs spec that's being worked uh, Yeah, I'm eagerly really waiting, waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think it would fit great. 
Um, yeah. It also is a good path to getting that metadata in Nova to, yes. um, you know, configure the config drive and, and whatnot. There's, and there's already been some work done in uh, Simple Init, I think, not Cloud Init, but Simple Init, to be able to read that metadata if it's passed in on the config drive. Cloud Init too. Cloud Init, Cloud Init V2 and Simple Init. Yep. Have you encountered any issue during the provision? So, can you share with us? For example, if the last step is to unbind the, the delete the port from the provision network, right? So after that, so you will create, uh, you update the port to the tenant network. So is if there any reason for some reason that the web app is broken, so it's not updating the port, so so oh, yeah. that means it's a, it's hand on the provision, right? <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Let me tell you about switch <laughs> auth systems and switch APIs that aren't meant to be pounded with requests. Um, <laughs> downstream, we have run into some of that. Uh, it's solved with a lot of retrying and occasional build failures that get rescheduled. And, um, and we're out of time. But I don't, we haven't seen any major issues that. Yeah. So be normal we debugging related issues. Normal <laughs> when you're building something, you know. You, you Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.